Hello. Hey. How are you? Hey, Brian. Good. How are you doing? Not too bad. Good to see you. I know we uh, skipped a month here. So this is our first time, what, since January, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We skipped last month because uh, yeah, things were, um, well, it was Chinese New Year um, that last month. And I think um, we somehow c couldn't coordinate our, our, our time. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's good to be back. How have you been? Been great, been great. Markets have been all over the place, particularly today. I think we've got a, a great oh, yeah. timing on our show once again, uh, because there's so much that's going on with the FOMC announcement and stuff that I'm sure you're covering over at uh, Equities Tracker as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, okay, so hey, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all our viewers. Today is well, on this side of the of the planet, uh, Thursday, the 21st of March. Um, and I think it's Wednesday, the 20th of March on your end. Yep. Evening. Exactly. We're just sitting here in the past. <laughs> there to you. Well, yeah. So welcome. Welcome to all our viewers. I hope everyone's doing well. Hope everyone is, uh, is, is, is healthy and doing well. So, okay. Um, we have a pretty, uh, we're going to have a pretty interesting show this week uh, or today, uh, with what's happened in the last, I'd say last few days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I yeah. mean, the theme is obviously all about the FOMC's decision and uh, the panic that was happening just prior to it and the celebration that happened right after. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think since we last came on in January, um, Bitcoin actually hit an all time high um, and then it dropped something like 10K. 10,000. And then uh, I think we're, I haven't checked, but we're back at 67,000. 67, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. That all time so, uh, high was hit on, uh, I believe, March 13th, a week ago today uh, from mm -hmm. my time zone. And yep. uh, it kind of hovered around there as it was teasing, potentially even going all the way to 75K before it rolled back pretty quickly to uh, as low as. Uh, the low 60Ks from what I saw. So it, it was a pretty sizable yeah. drop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think it was interesting on one on, on the uh, BitMEX uh, exchange. I think someone dumped a bunch of Bitcoin there and I think it hit as low as just under $10,000. $10, so whoever had it parked to buy a 10 grand, congratulations to you as an instant 6X. <laughs> Yeah, I, I heard a little about it. I, I don't have the supporting data prepared for today, but we certainly uh, saw some posts about that. I, I I question how much one single address at this point in Bitcoin's life cycle can really impact, uh, you know, Bitcoin's price to the extent of like 10% or more if they just dumped yep. it all at once, even if you're talking about the biggest whales. Um, it, yep. it was likely a, a bit of a coordinated effort. I think that... Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of the uh, wallets that hold, you know, large percentages of Bitcoin uh, are owned by individuals that know each other. They're owned by exchanges that know, know each other. There's a lot of uh, shady stuff that's always happening. And we can certainly look at some of the on-chain stuff that looked a little bonkers. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, we've got so many choices in what we can discuss. I think the immediate one would be the price rebound that we saw today um, yep. and we can kind of backtrack from there and look at how the past week and even the uh, up to, up, you know, the year to date for 2024, how uh, the events related to the ETFs have changed things, uh, how yep. the volume has just been nuts there, but there have been a lot of outflows as of late, could have been related to taxes uh, that mm -hmm. happened here in April here in the U.S. So there's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff we can go over. Yeah, let's uh, let's 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 take a look at some of the metrics. Oh, and and before we start, uh, for those of you who missed out, uh, you know the founder of Sentiment, uh, Maxim, was actually down here in Malaysia about two weeks ago, and uh, and we had a we had a a class of about thirty people, and uh, and Max actually spent two days with them going through Sentiment's on chain metrics, uh, and you know the. The crowd was obviously pleased and and minds were blown that weekend. Uh, so you know it was uh, and, and we well it wasn't just Maxim. We had we had a couple of sentiment 
team members down here as well. Uh, so that was that was a really good session with the with the equities tracker members. So they were they had their minds blown. Uh, they were extremely impressed with with sent you know the the metrics that you could get uh, or the tool that that sentiment um, is. And uh, they played around with uh, Senar, which is you know the uh, for you to well uh, predictive markets for you to make your predictions. So it was it was good. Uh, I, yeah, just wanted to make a shout out uh, and 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 to to Maxim to say uh, a great thank you, a big thank you, and and to the entire sentiment team for having such a great platform. Yeah, biases aside, the fact that I work for him, I mean, he's <laughs> he's a pretty knowledgeable guy, patient. He's the he's the life force behind sentiment and the reason why we have the kinds of metrics we do. So I heard it was a great time, and I'm I'm glad you enjoyed the experience. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it it was uh, it was amazing. Um, yeah, they uh, they they got a glimpse. So we had some, you know, traditional uh, retail investors who got a glimpse into uh, actually how transparent uh, the crypto markets can be compared to traditional markets. Yeah, so that was really good. That's awesome to hear. Well, let's. I'll do my best to maximum impression today and show what we have going on and uh, let's kind of go back and forth and talk about the kinds of things that you guys are interested in so I can make sure to really highlight those. Absolutely. Let's jump right into it. Over to you. All right. Perfecto. Let me know if my screen is showing up okay. Yep. All right. So Right here, this is essentially Santiment's home base where we look at the social volume changes going on, the price changes, uh, even market cap and volume changes over the past week. And, you know, one of the things that really stands out before we get into the individual assets, just look at the overall market cap over the past seven days. Uh, I do want to give it a refresh since this might be a couple hours old. So this was just today to give you an idea of how we've rebounded. If I switch to seven days, You'll see it looks a little more uh, like you would expect. The market cap, instead of 8% down in the past week, like it was a couple hours ago, now it's only down 6%. And the screener volume, basically every asset that Santiment has is on the screener. So roughly just under 2,900 assets at this point. It's up 23%. So clearly there's been a whole lot of polarization going on in the markets where people are either taking profit which I think there's been a little more of, or people are buying the dips after you know people see the opportunities to buy into all the chaos and get in at the low uh, 60Ks again for the first time in a long time. Um, so really the big story is Bitcoin, of course, which is now at 67.9. I'm actually seeing 67.7. So it depends on the exact minute because things are still very volatile, but point is Bitcoin dropping 7.3% the past week means altcoins are going to get hammered because altcoins have just been surging over the past five months, particularly since the start of 2024 is when the altcoin dominance over Bitcoin really began from what I saw. And it was kind of exchanging turns a little bit in terms of which altcoin sectors were jumping out into the lead at any given time. Meme coins was probably the biggest story. Uh, Floki, Doge, Bonk, um, a few other, you know, Shiba, of course, and a few other ones that I, I can't remember and aren't that important. But uh, there were so many assets out there that you really don't think about at all that were suddenly getting like 2x, 3x weeks. Uh, that, that you almost never see. The only time we really saw anything comparable was back in mid-2021, prior to the April uh, 2021, specifically the then all-time high that hit, where Dogecoin was going off. If you guys remember the GameStop and AMC situation, uh, which were some big stocks that Reddit uh, really pushed up with the power of um, crowd funds to to sock it to those hedge funds out there. But it was a crazy time. And we were kind of seeing the same kinds of things happening over the past few weeks up until we saw the big correction that started around the 13th. So here we are now. We're actually seeing everything being talked about less. So even though overall trading volume is up over the past week, 
they're doing it pretty quietly. There's not a lot of discussion related to all of the madness going on compared to the previous week. And that's probably attributed to the fact that people are just a little more excited during weeks where Bitcoin's hitting an all-time high compared to weeks where it's dropping off a cliff. So I'm not surprised to see social volume down, but overall, the market cap dropping 6% in a week, that's a, it's a pretty big deal. And it obviously, as I mentioned, it was a bigger deal before we saw a pretty big recovery in just the past uh, four to six hours after the U.S. got good news about the uh, Fed deciding to keep interest rates at the same level. Uh, first off, Andy, I'd love to hear your take on, you know, what you think that all means, whether it's a sign that we may just see this for the rest of the year. What do you think about the Fed's decision on that? Yeah, I I think, um, I mean, uh, I'm, I mean, this this was what I I I was watching an interview uh, with Lynn Alden, and mm -hmm. I think there are some things that we aren't aware of that, or many of us on the ground aren't aware of, is that whilst they they may seem to have turned off QE, um, but it, it kind of is still happening um, in an indirect way, where uh, somehow you know, the money printers are still on and um, there continues to be, uh, you know, money uh, or fiat being created. So um, I, I think there are many factors at play, but I think the news uh, that just came out, um, obviously the market has responded and they are happy with what they've heard. So I, uh, I, I, you know, let's 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 see what happens. But but I think overall, the the general feeling is that um, people seem to be more hopeful, uh, you know, in the markets, uh, especially in crypto land. Um, also, I think I, I woke up this morning to the news of BlackRock announcing um, a uh, uh, that they'd be partnering up with Securitize. Uh, in order to launch um, a tokenized fund, um, and 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 I think I saw a clip of Larry Fink talking about it. So um, I think I don't know. I mean, I see the beginnings of Wall Street adoption uh, coming through. Yeah, I, I think that BlackRock point is really interesting because there there's certainly going to be. Um, People wondering about a conflict of interest because BlackRock's, you know, ETFs are such a, a big thing now. And all of a sudden they're like, oh, by the way, we're also a traditional crypto asset instead, if you prefer that, uh, which could very well take away from their own client base. So uh, I'm kind of curious on how that's going to work. There are experts out there who know much more about the situation than I do. Uh, but yeah, that that could have had a positive effect on the market as well. Um and what we're looking at here, by the way, is the price comparison of Bitcoin in green, Ethereum in, in magenta here, gold in gold, and uh, the S&P in teal. And you can see the big jump that they all had <laughs> right at about the same time. Um, this was as the news was breaking about the FOMC keeping interest rates the same, which, by the way, in previous instances where these kinds of announcements happen, there's often an initial good reaction followed by a longer bad reaction. I'm not going to say that's guaranteed to happen this time, but it, it has been common for the whatever the short term crowd's reaction is, the long term result is the opposite of that for substantially longer. Uh, it worked the same way when people started to get very negative in 2022 about every interest rate hike. And by the last one, everyone was just selling as soon as they heard, you know, interest rates are being hiked. And then all of a sudden that's the market bottom and prices go nuts. So uh, I, I'm interested to see how the next literally 48 hours will go. Um, even just in the past hour from the, this recording, you know, the hype stopped. Uh, people went off to dinner or whatever they're doing here in the U.S. or even in global areas where they're reacting to the FOMC news. And now prices are kind of flattening out here at 67k so you know we may even put a pull up uh, it would be interesting interesting to hear what your community says too 
do we see 70K first or do we go back to 65K first? Uh, I, I would imagine people are going to be much more expecting 70K, which would be a bad sign because we need the crowd, these small wallets, to be fearful and fudding and wanting to take profit while they think they have the chance to uh, so that whales eventually will pump markets and get us back to 70K and beyond. And uh, I've got this chart here that's showing the real-time amount of people calling for buys versus calling for sells. We put it on a shared axis here. And you can see it's, it's pretty overwhelmingly showing buy calls way out in the lead here which is normal. I mean, this is, you're always going to see maybe like 30 to 40% more buy calls, but I feel like it's gotten a little more extreme just eyeballing this. You see right here when people were starting to get very polarized and then it flattened out. And then again, you have this big volatility on March uh, 5th and prices drop. Everyone gets uh, opinionated. It seemed as though people were wanting to buy the dip, but it's hard to see. There's a pretty big sell candle right there also. So I think both of these instances previously were big uh, negative reactions. There was a lot more FUD than usual. And that resulted in a continued climb that inevitably got us above 73K for the first time in history. Now we're kind of seeing, I mean, this one in particular, pretty big buy signal uh, or or expectation that this is a good time to buy from the crowd. And I would like to see a little more selling discussion going on right now to justify that we're going to rebound to 70K and beyond. What do you think, Andy? Yeah, that's, uh, no, that's, that's, uh, I think, I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, and, and I learned something while Max was here. Should, uh, 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 should, should we take a look at supply distribution? Mm hmm. Absolutely. By the way, look at this Twitter, especially on Twitter. It's just overwhelmingly optimistic. Uh, and they're probably the biggest. I, I think oh, yeah. definitively they're the biggest. So this probably has the most pull. Pay attention to the amount of optimism going on right now. Just a little bit of a warning sign. I'm not going to guarantee anything because we don't give investment advice. But um, it, based on history, there's some concerns there. Now, you mentioned supply distribution, Andy. I, of course, had that queued up because I wanted to get into it. And uh, right now it's showing that the whales are kind of just chilling out. They're not, they're not taking crazy profits. Yes, they, they went down a bit. Um, let me zoom in here so you can see it a little more clear. <clears throat> so they were at its peak literally the day of the all-time high, 13.13 .13 million Bitcoin were held by wallets that had between 10 to 10,000 BTC in them. It's roughly two thirds of the overall supply from this, this tier of wallets. Uh, that also translated to 66.85% at that date. They're now at 66.69%. So they had a little 0.16% drop in the supply. Obviously that's, I think hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, it may be billions, it's close, but you can see just by looking at this, like this is not a big drop though in their total amount of Bitcoin. And a lot of these are made up by miners, of course, because you'll often see <clears throat> the total amount exceeding the percentage because the miners are getting more and more coins of the new supply that's being printed as days go by, which is interesting. But the point is, I mean, February 4th, they were holding 12.98 million. They got up to 13.13 million, and now they're still at 13.11 million. Whole lot closer to where we were just last week than where we were back on February 4th when it was looking like they were dumping. So I like the look of that. What I am more concerned about is the dry powder part of the equation, which shows that Tether's kind of being dumped right now, and so is USD coin, and they've been kind of going on this down slope for quite some time, going all the way back to August for USD coin and June for Tether. That was when they were being held at their peak in these shark and whale tier level wallets. So it's kind of a mixed signal right now. 
the dark green line, in my opinion, still has the most alpha of these four with the percentage held being the second most important. But when you see that the stable coins are clearly being exchanged for more Bitcoin rather than stable coins, like right here, for example, in June, you see how all these the stable coins were going up, but so was Bitcoin. So they were basically taking fiat out of their personal, you know, accounts in banks and injecting them into crypto. That's what makes crypto's market cap grow most prominently. Uh, when it's stable coins being exchanged for Bitcoin, uh, it's a little more nuanced because there isn't always a net gain of, you know, convertible dollars going into crypto, if that makes sense, Andy. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's interesting. The, the point you made about um, the growth of uh, Bitcoin and also the growth of uh, of stable coins, uh, meaning, uh, you know, the, the the crypto sphere is actually growing because um, people are exchanging their their fiat currency into stable coin, uh, getting ready to to deploy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of the name of the game. Like, how much there's a finite amount of dollars in the world, or whatever currency they use. Um, and there's a finite amount of crypto, how much of those dollars or other fiat currencies are being moved in and out of any crypto asset at any given time? How much is the overall market cap of crypto going, even, even including stable coins, which people often overlook as an important ingredient? So I, I think this is increasingly becoming something I'm personally trying to analyze because it has such a tight correlation to the direction of uh, where Bitcoin's prices will go next. And obviously this line alone, for anyone who's using Santiment or decides to make a free account using code equities tracker to get 25% off of your first purchase when you choose to do that, uh, I recommend going straight for the 10 to 10,000 BTC tier because it gives a lot of free info on where prices are likely to go next. And also, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I talked with Maxim the other day. So our, I do want to say our percentages of supply and exchanges are not totally accurate. However, the direction of where they're going is accurate. So when you're seeing a constant drop in Bitcoin supply and exchanges, that's a pretty good, good sign, especially what we saw right on March, what, third and fourth year, where it just plummeted. Uh, with so much BTC being moved into uh, <coughs> hot and cold wallets and away from exchanges. And that's a, a pretty nice sign that we were going to be able to continue to climb. And it, it, we really haven't seen that Bitcoin move back to exchanges yet, which is a great sign uh, that there, there may not be the big, huge plummet that people are expecting. Maybe it already happened. Maybe we have a couple more waves in us going into the 50 K's or something, but uh, it, it's hard to see too many red flags right now. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting, Brian, um, you know, uh, for those of the viewers who don't know, you know, there, there's only a finite amount of Bitcoin. So, you know, what that really means is when, when Bitcoin moves off of exchanges and if demand, um, whether it stays constant or increases, um, as long as they don't withdraw it from the exchange, uh, we don't have a bank run yet. But effectively, it would cause a bank run if everybody wanted to withdraw the amount of Bitcoin that they wanted. I mean, that's assuming that the, you know, that that the exchanges don't have one to one. But if they did have one to one, then that'll be fine. But but as soon as as uh, people start moving their Bitcoin off of exchanges, that means uh, there's less to actually buy. Uh, and what happens when supply is low and, and demand stays constant or increases, um, the price goes up. So, yeah. Yeah, that's well said, Andy. And of course, that segues uh, the discussion about the halving, which is now under one month away. April 19th, 2024, at least here in the US, is the target date for uh, the mining 
to become twice as difficult. And uh, with that, it means that the remaining supply of Bitcoin that can be mined will theoretically occur at half the speed in which it has for the past four years before the last halving happened. And generally when that happens, the theory is that each existing Bitcoin becomes that much more valuable. It's just like mining for gold, right? And if, if we're suddenly all notified that there's uh, that the, the mining picks to get out the gold are, are half as effective, that means the existing gold that's already been mined is going to be worth more. And uh, historically, going back to 2020, 2016, and 2012, this has resulted in uh, Bitcoin going up in value shortly after this having, or even right before in anticipation um, and, and kind of proving that theory about supply, uh, uh, the finite amount of supply being being accurate. So, and, yeah, and, and this and in this cycle, what's interesting is that we have the additional ETFs that are demanding Bitcoin and needing to purchase Bitcoin, uh, because uh, for those who don't don't know how the ETF mechanisms work, uh, people with a stockbroking account can purchase a Bitcoin ETF uh, and with fiat money, with normal money, uh, currency, whether it's the US dollar or, you know, the Singapore dollar, wh whatever it is. And once they've purchased it, uh, what they uh, what the ETF providers will need to do is take this money and go and find Bitcoin to buy and store it uh, in, in their cold wallets. Uh, and I think most of them are storing it with Coinbase custody. So what's interesting is what happens if you have all this money and you're going out to the market and you have to buy, uh, you have to purchase this Bitcoin and, and store it and there isn't enough to go around. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So in, in this cycle, that's, I guess that's the variable that sticks out from the last, you know, the previous two cycles. Yeah, that's a great way of putting it. Um, and I want to remind everyone, you know, Bitcoin's a zero sum game. At the end of the day, just like every asset out there, uh, there's a metric that Andy and I have gone over on previous shows called MVRV, where it's essentially measuring the average returns of every single wallet in a given period of time, in this case, 30 days, in this case, 365 days, and seeing how much they are either in profit or at a deficit compared to when they bought it. And for the first time in a long time, just prior to the big bounce that we had in the last few hours, we actually saw that the 30 day average wallet was in the red. Uh, it got as low as a little over 6% or down 6%, I should say, uh, which indicated that we likely had a good buy opportunity at that time. You want to buy when others are in pain on average, you want to take profit when others are hugely in profit themselves and are euphoric and undisciplined traders are buying more even though they're already in profit, right? So the fact that we saw this signal, uh, I think it was less than 24 hours ago, yeah. Uh, this was like 16 hours ago. This was an ideal time to buy and obviously it was aided by the great FOMC news, but regardless, I'd keep an eye on that and I would also keep an eye on funding rates, which have been a big story uh, because they were so, so bullish here for so long. Uh, you can see right before that all time high, just huge, huge funding rate spikes on Binance indicating longs were paying shorts just to open those big margin uh, trades to try to you know, get as much as possible while Bitcoin was continuing to climb. And obviously, as you'd imagine, a lot of these longs got burned and liquidated pretty quickly after Bitcoin retraced about 10% or so. So now it's a little more neutral. I mean, Binance looks like it's right about flat once again. BitMEX is flat. DYDX just slightly long. And Deribit, uh, I'm not even seeing it on our graph right now for whatever reason. But yeah, it, it's calmed down, which is a great sign. It means that the greed in terms of where people are putting you know, their money where their mouth is, 
it's it's dissipated significantly. Yeah, and and what's interesting is you know uh, the during that period um, when demand was so high, it was interesting the uh, the the inch or the reward rate that was being given for stable coin on those centralized exchanges. I think I saw one as high as thirty percent um, wow. APR. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's telling you just how overheated the market was getting. And yeah, what goes up must come down at some point. It's always the case. It doesn't mean it's going to go all the way down. Some people, you know, see a drop to 60K and think, oh, I'll just wait for 30K again. It may never get there or it, it might take years to get there. Um, yeah. But, you know, it, pay attention to how everyone else is thinking. If uh, if you are the only person on the planet that thinks that prices will retrace below 50K again or 40K again, that significantly increases the likelihood of that coming true because the crowd are all bullish and saying up, 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 up. Uh, so I, I think this is a fascinating time right now. Um, and we just, we just are going to continue to monitor the overall bullish versus bearish sentiment of the markets right now. I, I want to also shout out uh, our developers that just added this widget here so we can look at individual assets and see what the overall bearish to bullish sentiment is according to all of their commentary on Twitter, Reddit, Telegram, uh, 4chan, and even uh, Bitcoin talk, which we just added. So we scrape all of those and using our proprietary algorithm, we can tell how unironically people are bullish or bearish with every comment they make. Uh, and it gives us this meter, which is awesome. So Ethereum is, is more or less kind of neutral right now, while you can see some of the more like airdroppy or, or meme coin assets out there, like Shroom and Game. They're much more in the bullish area uh, due to recent... Um, recent spikes that they've had so that's really cool that's There's a really Bitcoin cool feature seven very much neutral at the moment which is a great sign because everyone started to get scared after the drop this past week oh yeah but anyways um can you think of any other topics we might want to touch on yeah, I, I think um, I, I think uh, the other news headline that I saw this morning is that the SEC was going after the uh, Ethereum Foundation uh, because they deem Ethereum as a security instead yeah. of uh, of uh, yeah. This is a story that uh, Ripple and XRP traders out there know very well. Uh, Ethereum's been under attack for being a security before, and uh, it does appear that there is that exact story that Andy is referring to right here about it being a security classification, regulatory risk, counterparty risk, market manipulation, all sorts of stuff that has mm -hmm. uh, made Ethereum very polarized right now. Uh, and by the way, sentiment AI generates all of this just by gathering all the conversations going on around the internet, which I think is pretty awesome. That is really awesome. That's a really cool, cool feature to have. And it gives a bullish summary too. You know, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it says everyone is scared by this securities situation and therefore it's creating a, a higher potential for a breakout, which by the way, it is outpacing Bitcoin at the time of this recording. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's um, it's interesting, um, and, and just just a trivial uh, uh, you know trivial note here, in in Malaysia you know uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, uh, you know XRP and, and a few other coins. Um, so the the regulator here uh, in Malaysia have classified uh, all uh, well the 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 approved uh, cryptos as uh, as a security. So therefore all securities uh, laws would apply to it. So Very different jurisdictions treat them differently. Yeah. Yeah. 
no, I mean, every, every country and region in the world, they can, they can treat it in their own way. Uh, yeah. The U S being the power that we are, whether I like that or not, I'm not, I'm certainly not saying that in a braggy way, but uh, the U S does have a large control of where crypto assets head simply because it's the largest um, overall market that has Absolutely. unproven, I guess, but it has theoretically the most crypto uh, owned uh, by citizens in this country. Yeah, China, absolutely. I know, has been up there too. I don't know what the exact stats are, but yeah, obviously, U.S. and Chinese policy is going to matter more than uh, you know Bangladesh's. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see how this um, how 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 this plays out. I think so too. Yeah, and Ethereum is the number one trending token right now for the exact reason that Andy Andy named here. So. And cool. And I think uh, we're kind of right on time, aren't we? Yeah, I think so. Uh, one last thing, by the way, I wanted to show the new uh, crypto narratives uh, dashboard we have. Uh, this wow. essentially is exactly what it looks like. It's showing the top 15 to 20 subjects that are kind of circulating around uh, crypto over the past two weeks and giving the overall amount of uh, social volume related to them on like an hour by hour basis. So for example, you can see that right now, rising topics are uh, involving ETF inflows. You can see it's clearly getting wider. Um, BTC is clearly getting wider once again. You can see when we were really getting greedy last week, uh, BTC was not being talked about. It was much more of a narrow line, especially right here. Uh, look at how little Bitcoin was being talked about just before all-time high because everyone was talking about things like Pepe and things like Solana and, uh, you know, if you want to call them that, uh, competitors of Bitcoin. So that's kind of how the cycle works. That's interesting. That's, that's a really cool graph right there. I love it. Yeah, we're still trying to find really great use for it in terms of price market prediction. But uh, I, I think in general, if you've woken up from a, a month long coma and you want to know what's going on in crypto, this would be the first place to start just based on it automatically pulling the top topics. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. But yeah, that's about it, Andy. It's always nice to catch up with you and talk crypto and visit with your community. Uh, I do yeah. want to remind everyone, that, you know, you've got that equities tracker discount coupon code for anyone who wants to use sentiment. And right now is a pretty good time to use it. I'm telling you. Absolutely. It's, it's a fantastic tool. It's, it's, it's great. Um, and you'll be surprised at how much transparency the crypto market has. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah. So there you go on the, on screen, it should be, it should be scrolling across, uh, use that discount code equity striker to get 25% off. Um, closing thoughts, Brian. I think we, uh, we are going to probably be shifting our collective focus to the having for the next few weeks here. I'm very interested to see how euphoric and greedy people get related to mm -hmm. it. Some people think the price has already been baked in and that's what the past five months have been about. Other people think the mainstream crowd hasn't even been thinking about it. If it's the latter, then we've got a little ways to, to potentially climb before the, the FOMO really kicks in. Uh, but some people, you know, think about uh, like a, a big known event for Apple or something, usually the stock is rising weeks prior to it. And then the people who already know how the event's going to go, they're the ones jumping out when they saw that everyone else pushed up the price for them. So there could be a little bit of that too, but this isn't like pre-predictive sometimes. You have to see day by day, are people suddenly making this topic viral or are they keeping it on the down low? So I think the having is, is the big one we're going to be revisiting when we talk next month yeah yeah uh, i think by the time we talk next month it'll be did we say it was the 19th of uh, uh the havings on the 19th so i'm just, I'm just checking 
Yeah. Which we, would be Friday. Yeah, we'd be talking on the 17th. 10th or 11th, was it? Uh, I, I can't remember. Do we talk the second or yeah. third week? Second second week of the month. Okay. Um, so we'll talk about a week before it happens. Yeah, yeah, and then let's see what happens. Yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be exciting. Can't wait, my friend. Yeah, well, once again, thank you, Brian, for spending it, your evening and your time with us. Uh, and I appreciate, you know, the community appreciates what you do. And uh, and 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 what uh, what a great platform that sentiment is. So we uh, we look forward to our next one, and our viewers look forward to it. Thanks for having me, my friend. Great visiting with everyone, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Have a great one. You too. Bye bye. bye.